I'm the Water Efficiency Advisor at Energy Savings Scotland Device Centre. We're currently running a pilot in Edinburgh at the moment on water efficiency, and this is with the Energy Saving Trust, which the Energy Saving Scotland Device Centre is part of, and we're also working alongside WaterWise. The idea of the pilot is basically to look at ways in which we can basically use less water and thinking about the importance of water. So I thought the first way to kick off would just be kind of like, how many litres of water does it take to fill Murrayfield? But it actually turns out it's around about a billion litres. But that's kind of not that interesting. What's really interesting is that as the Edinburgh population consumes that much water every 14 days. So just to give you an idea, we on average use around about 150 litres per person. So it's an awful lot of water to be uh, consuming. So it's kind of quite an interesting thing that every 14 days we manage to get through. Sorry, Oops, sorry, just let me come back one. Um, why are we doing this? Well, it's climate change amongst other things. Um, and even under a lower emissions scenario, we can see that we might even have around about 50% less precipitation in the summer. And actually, that's when we need water the most. That's when we have our peak demand for water. So the benefits of actually saving water are that we can actually decrease our carbon emissions. We can actually save people money on their utility bills. And we also ensure that we extract from the water resources sustainably and we don't compete with natural wildlife at times of drought. Now, this is one thing that I think a lot of people don't realise, how much energy water does use. It seems that it rains a lot in Scotland, but just because it rains a lot, you ha it takes a lot of energy to actually get that water that's falling into a state which you can use. For instance, Scottish water is the single largest consumer of electricity in Scotland. And that's because it uses an awful lot of energy to pump, to clean, and to deal with our sewage. But in terms of carbon emissions, that actually only accounts for around about 11% of the carbon emissions associated with water consumption. The rest are actually associated with use in the home. And the reason for that is it's hot water. Hot water uses an awful lot of energy. Water has a massively high specific heat capacity. It takes a lot of energy to warm it up. It's around about 5% of UK carbon emissions are actually just heating up our hot water. So it's an awful lot of energy. Now, just to really emphasize the point why it's really hot water items that are really the big carbon culprits here, if we have a look in, this is an average occupancy household. We can see that the toilet, the WC at the top there, is the largest single water consumer in the house. And when we look at the average carbon emissions from an existing house, we see that actually it's the sort of the hot water items, the things like the dishwashers, and actually the uh, the toilet actually accounts for a very relatively small amount of carbon in comparison. <coughs> and in terms of actually fuel bills, it costs us on average around about 30% of our gas bills actually on heating up our hot water. Hot water is the second largest consumer of energy in the home after your space heating. For the average household, that's around about £200 a year. So it's something we can do to save money by reducing our hot water consumption. There are three areas of the home we need to look at. We need to look at bathroom, kitchen and the garden. Obviously some people with tenements may not have a specific garden so that may not be as useful to them but those are the kind of the broad areas we need to look at. And what are the technologies available to us to actually start saving water in the home? Well there's things like these. This is an aerated shower head. What this does is it adds little wee bubbles of air into the water. The benefit of that is actually you use a lot less water you've probably come across an aerated tap. Those are the taps you turn on, and it looks like sort of a champagne effect coming on. The benefit of that is that with the sort of the average power shower, you're using around about 15 meters. With the average um, aerated shower head, you're only using around about eight. But because you're adding the bubbles in, you're maintaining a lot of the, a lot of the feeling and sensation of the shower you normally have. Another thing we can look at is, uh, is a wee to inject. And this has two little wee jets which collide and sort of give an impression of more water falling. We also are looking at giving away these for free, and these are shower smarts. And what these are is flow restrictors, and these can be put onto the shower, and actually these reduce the flow rate in, say, a power shower to down around about 7.7. The important thing to note with all of these products is that they should not be installed on an electric shower. If you think about an electric shower, what it is is, in essence, a kettle on a wall. If you kind of reduce the amount of heat it's losing, 
by basically limiting the amount of water that's going out, it can actually overheat. So it's definitely something not to do for electric showers, but you can fit these on power showers. Obviously, make sure you go to the energy efficient appliances. There are energy saving recommended. There's also the EU scheme there. And also, for your cold water, because as I said, it's also important, although you're not going to be saving money on saving cold water in Scotland, you would be in England and Wales because they, they're metered slightly differently. Um, you can actually drop these into your system. The benefit of this is it's got lots of wee expandable crystals in there. You drop it in, it expands, and it means that every time you flush the loo, around about a litre less. Now, these should really be installed in sort of pre-2001 toilets. The modern toilets will have quite a low uh, flow system, so if you put them in, you might find yourself having to flush twice. Obviously, if you've got the two wee buttons, the, the dual flushes, I've come across people that actually wonder why they've got two buttons. Obviously, small button, small <laughs> flush, big button, big flush. But those kind of things, it's worth making people aware of those kind of things. And as I said, yes, don't fit these two electric showers. You'll tend to have a chance of busting the unit. Always check the manufacturer's guidance because sometimes you need a certain amount of pressure, water pressure, to actually use some of these devices. And obviously, fitting very quickly. Also, it's really important that you maintain your house. So basically, if you've got a hot water tank which isn't insulated, you should really insulate it because it absolutely costs virtually nothing compared to the amount of heat you're losing. A lot of people have them in their house and they use them as airing covers. Well, there's a reason why they're using it as airing covers because you're losing a lot of heat from the tank. Mm -hmm. And if you're spending all that money on heating up the hot water, it seems daft to let it disappear. Again, make sure you insulate any visible water pipes for the hot water. But it's also important to make sure you fix taps. That's what one leaking tap can waste in a year. It's an awful lot of water. When you kind of remember back that I said, on average, we use around about 150 litres per person per day, 5,500 litres could potentially be lost with a leaking tap. That is a phenomenal amount of water. So if you've got a leaking tap, worth trying to look into fixing it. You can actually find out how to fix them on the internet. But if, you, if you're struggling with that, go and get a plumber to come and fix it for you. Water saving is really very, some things you can do which are really, really behaviour based. Now, this is a classic debate. It's like, what is better, the bath or the shower? And the outcome actually isn't as cut as you might think. A lot of people obviously say, check, the shower is always better. It isn't necessarily always better. It really depends on the type of shower you have and the amount of time you spend in that shower. We can have a look there. <laughs> the litres per minute vary from 6 down to 45. So, obviously, in that multiple shower head, if you're in there for around about three minutes, you're using roughly the average daily consumption of water. But obviously, with the electric shower, a lot less. Now, if we sort of bring that into perspective a bit better, we can see you've got the mixer shower, the electric shower, and the power shower, and the bath is the black line there. You can see when you're in power shower, after around about seven minutes, you're actually producing more carbon than if you were in a bath. Also, what's interesting to note is that the mixer shower actually produces less carbon than the electric shower, although in all probability it has a higher flow rate. The reason is because obviously electricity is far more carbon intensive than gas, it's around about three times more carbon intensive. So what seems like a sort of simple thing, well just you know take a shower, yes take a shower, but take a short shower and make sure you're using quite a low flow shower head. 